Go west, young man. Haven't you been told California is full of whiskey, women, and gold? Theodore Roosevelt. Might have been Toby Keith. You know, it's a big honor for me to get to hunt with the real true guys out at 7J every year. Backstrap math was the only math I was ever good at. One deer equals two backstraps. Anyway. We plan it like that for a reason. It's the most laid back, chill hunt that you can ever imagine. You get into camp, sometimes a couple days early, get your bow out, it's just such a laid back atmosphere, and then you roll into that opening day hunt with one of the best bunch of guys that you could put together in the hunting industry. We're excited to be back in Wyoming. Man, it sure is a big deal for me to hunt with such great hunters like David Blanton and all the guys from Realtree that I grew up watching on Monster Bucks. It's an honor to be here. It's really nice. All the people are nice. The food is great. And I love deer hunting. Spend too much money to have a little fun. Come on. Well, believe it or not, we're traveling 1,759 miles this week to Wyoming just to shoot a white-tailed deer. That's 26 hours if we do the speed limit. Turns out people come to Wyoming for a lot crazier reasons than that. People come to see the beautiful mountains, take in all the fresh air. They even come to hear crazy folklore about giant bears that kidnap women and things like the jackalope, which is apparently a hybrid deer and jackrabbit. There's even a legend in Wyoming about little tiny people that shoot you with poison arrows and beat each other's heads in. It's a real thing. They're called necromongus or new, new chupacabra. What are they? Nanumbi. Nanumbi. It's real. Look it up. Beautiful. The main reason we come to Wyoming isn't the folklore or the beautiful views or the fresh mountain air. It's not even really the white-tailed deer hunting. It's to see our good friends at 7J Outfitters. I mean, to be honest, it's a lot about the deer hunting. We've been getting together with Jeff and Deb of 7J Outfitters and our good buddies from Team Realtree for the last couple years now, and we've all gone out there and killed some good bucks. Big body deer. Look right there, Senor Queso. <laughs> Come here and look at this buck, son. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Thought it was flashlight now. <laughs> Can you even believe we killed a big nine? To be holding his rack right now, it just doesn't feel real. And don't worry, I was sure to keep the buck doe ratio in check while I was out there too. Uh, freezer queen, party of two. Freezer queen, party of two. First two kills of the season. I'm back. For the last couple years, 7J's been the first hunt of the season, and it's hard to leave the kids after a summertime of laying on the riverbank catching fish and having a good time and get on the road and drive 26 hours. It's a little rough leaving home for me. Because she's learning to be a libertarian. Isn't that why you only eat vegetables? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. No. 
That's a vegetarian. I guess I should address the issue that I look like a carnival worker this week. The guy that's running the Tilt-A-Whirl at your local fair that has a shirt that says no fat chicks on it. It was really just supposed to be a cowboy mustache. Good luck for the hunting trip, a tribute to Jeff, but I needed to make mention of it because I know some of you are out there going like, it's a bold move right there, Cotton. That mustache. We love you, Daddy. Love you, too. All right, y'all have fun. Right. Get going love so you don't love have you to get Daddy. there. Love you, too. Late, late, late. It's going to take us 26 hours to get there, but fortunately for you, the viewer, it's only going to take the time that this montage takes to play. Come here, honey, do what comes naturally. For a bow hunter that grew up watching Monster Bucks, it doesn't get a whole lot better than kicking your season off at 7J Outfitters. I know I say it every year, but going out to 7J to spend time with our brothers from Realtree is a big honor for me. We always have a ball out there, and you always leave 7J feeling like you're a better person than when you got there. Well, we're back here at 7J, and uh, we're on the archery range, flinging a couple arrows. I checked my zero on my bow this morning just to make sure it was still dialed in after that long trip. You always want to get out, and I say this every year when we come out west, but you always want to get out and shoot because the altitude, actually, the thin air will change the impact of your arrow sometimes, um, depending on what elevation you're at. Typically, the thinner the air, the higher your arrow's gonna hit, so. We out, here, we out here making sure she's still dialed in. And it seems like it's money. How's she shooting? Good, man. His dad is the owner of Campbell Soup. His dad invented soup. Campbell Soup. That's Maybe. him right there, Kip Campbell. A couple hundred years ago, invented soup. I'll tell you what, old Nick's a good dude. And anybody who's kin folks show up with a Ron Swanson t-shirt on, they are all right with me. Y'all don't know who Ron Swanson is. You watch a show called Parks and Rec. He's basically my spirit animal. The shirt actually gives me hope for America. <laughs> That's what it does. All right, man, let's go kill some stuff. On that first hunt, we got absolutely skunked which had me a little bit worried about the spot we picked to hunt. Traditionally, this farm has been absolutely amazing for us, but this year, big drought, alfalfa looked like it had dried up pretty good, and we just were not seeing a tenth of the deer numbers we typically were on this place. The mustache mojo so far, not working. Unfortunately for me, I had to leave the Hoyt on the bow hanger this evening, but my man Martin, Turns out I had a little bit different look. I ain't nervous. It was hard. It was a decision. I told Steve, I said, we was going to shoot him before the big one got here. Mm -hmm. We still going to shoot him. Yep. If Amen. he gives us a chance. Amen, brother. All right, first afternoon at 7J and uh, been an event for him. We got to the farm. Deer were already loaded in the field. So we had to do our best to slip up through here, get to the stand. We did so without bumping any deer. Unbelievable. Cause if you knew how big me and Steven were in real life, it's pretty incredible. Bro, that is the most incredible freaking deer hunt I've ever had. Look at, oh, look, at, that started bigger than I thought he was. Golly. Whoa. Hold the phone, boy. Hold the phone. Look at that pretty sucker there. Big old mature Wyoming rascal. Full velvet. Look at that thing. That sucker's pretty. Look at them brow ties. Look at that. Look. Yeah. I can't. I can't let that walk, boys. Hey. Somebody got a strike first. It might as well be me. <laughs> Nothing like seeing one of your best buddies kill something on the first day. I'm hoping that's going to be a sign that the hunting's going to be good for the rest of us all week. I really do hope 
that Martin killing that buck was a good sign for the rest of us. But where I'm hunting, it seems like we're up against it, man. It's hot, it's dry, there's a drought. The alfalfa looks like it's burned up, and we are not seeing many deer. To top it all off, there's a full moon. So we're looking at a vast amount of land, and we're seeing very, very few deer, which is unbelievably unusual for anywhere on 7J. The one thing we did have going for us on this farm is we knew where two pretty good bucks were using this little oak draw pretty much every morning and evening. Now, we hadn't got the wind right until today to get in on them, but we moved the summit so we feel like we got a pretty good plan and the last couple days these two bucks walked within 20 yards of this tree that we put the summits in. So, crossing our fingers, hoping they're going to feed up this little oak draw and some acorns and give us a 20 yard shot. Well, it looks like our plan's gonna work out. These two bucks are making their way to us and where the trail that they're on crosses by my tree stand is only about 20 yards. I'm hoping they're gonna come around here between those trees and the fence. That one bug in front's kind of super cautious. This is pretty cool, we're watching these deer browse on these oak limbs, and I'm just really waiting for A, one of them to turn fully broadside, or come on a little bit closer for a shot. You getting any of that? That's cool. I thought this was a done deal. I had that deer on the wall already. All he needed to do was turn broadside and hang out for a second and or walk right to our tree stand on the same trail he was on, but instead, he got done feeding and just turned around and walked away. Oh man, I hope they don't walk that way. I thought they were gonna come this way. That's why I was waiting for better footage right here. I couldn't shoot because he was buying some stuff. That's deer hunting, man. You can't predict it. He's a wild animal that's got a mind of his own. He can do whatever he wants to do. And I guess on that particular day, he didn't want to walk under our tree stand. They fed up to us like they were going to come right in. I had, a, I had a limb in my way and the deer, I mean, he was a little quarter in two, but I could have made the shot. But I had this limb in my way. We made the right call, but it's frustrating because that was a nice buck, man. It's a, it's a good 10 point. But, He's now fed his way that way. We gotta be careful because he might just feed right back up and go the normal way he's been going to bed is down this bed line. And that's what I was thinking that he did it every morning. So we were thinking he was gonna come to the fence and have a 25 yard shot right here. This drought and full moon was definitely making the hunting hard on all of us, but it seemed like the guys down by the river were having a little bit more action. That being that close to that water source, I think was helping him out. And David on this particular hunt has a really cool buck coming to him.
can't just fail right there. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good deer, dude. That's a great deer. Wow. That's a great deer. All right. Look at that. I didn't think it'd go very far. Look at that buck. My goodness. Look at that. Unreal hunt. Third day of the hunt here. 27th year at 7J Outfitters. It just seems like it gets better and better. I had to watch this buck come for four or 500 yards. And I mean, this was just an incredible hunt. What a buck. We are trying to grind it out in the spot we're at in hopes that this shooter is gonna show back up. But it looks like our luck, as well as all our alfalfa, has dried up. Not ideal conditions, but you never know. I hate to say it, but in the back of my mind, I was kind of like, well, I mean, Nick didn't kill one, so I'm not the odd man out, and Misery loves company, so at least me and him can talk about how we both didn't get a deer at 7J that year, and happens to the best of us, right, Nick? And then Nick pulls this move. Okay, he's coming to the edge of the wood. Okay, he's, he's gonna follow the shade. He's coming. <laughs> That sneaky little sucker slid out on the last morning in the fourth quarter and pulled off a great shot. Drills it absolutely 10 rings this deer. That is the best way you could possibly end a last ditch effort to get you a buck and get your tag hung on a good buck. Yeah! Woo yeah! Yes! Yeah! Good job, dude! Yeah! I can't believe it! It worked! We got him! Yeah! God, he's so awesome, you guys. <laughs> I can't even believe it! It worked! This guy. Oh, he's a toad. Look at that. Oh. That is so sweet, you guys. I can't even believe it. What a puck. How dare you? <laughs> I wore my bone collector shirt and everything, and you gotta leave me the last man standing. No, I didn't get one. No, congratulations, man. That's an awesome buck. Thank you. That's an awesome buck. I'm the kind of guy who is genuinely happy when everybody else kills, but also I kind of put on a fake smile than the fact that I didn't kill, and inside my competitive side, I'm very angry with myself that I didn't do something different to make it happen. But you know what? You gotta get over that, man. That's deer hunting. And we all had such a great time at 7J this week. Unbelievable friendships have been built there over the last few years. The people there take care of you, like I said, like you're their family. And you always leave the 7J trip a better man than when you got there. There's no doubt about that. Ooh, fly. There's a fine line between getting a fly and wrecking your whole lighting kit. <laughs>